Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant at Arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. The Secretary will close the roll. Members, please stand for the prayer. I ask that members pause for a moment of silent prayer and reflection, and following the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. The Secretary will take the roll. Senators Abler, Anderson, Bach, Benson, Bigham, Carlson, Chamberlain, Champion, Clausen, Coleman, Swazinski, Dames, Dibble, Dornick, Dreheim, Duckworth, Dietzik, Eaton, Eichhorn, Eakin, Fate, Friends, Gazelka, Goggin, Herr, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Ingebrigtsen, Isaacson, Jasinski, Johnson, Johnson, Stewart, Kent, Kiffmeyer, Klein, Coran, Kunish, Lang, Latz, Limmer, Lopez, Frenzen, Marty, Matthews, McEwen, Miller, Murphy, Nelson, Newman, Newton, Osmick, Pappas, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rerick, Rest, Rosen, Rude, Senjum, Thomasoni, Torres Ray, Utke, Weber, Westrom, Weger, Wickland. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Senators Anderson, Carlson, Chamberlain, Dames, Dietzik, Eakin, Goggin, Housley, Howe, Ingebrigtsen, Kent, Newton, Thomasoni, and Wickland. A quorum is present. Members, beginning today under the eighth order of business, first reading of Senate bills. The bills in today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as indicated. Moving to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. We will adopt the author's motions as one motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. Senate resolutions 146 and 147 are, are referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. The Secretary will read Senate Resolution Number 148. Senators Miller and Lopez Franzen introduce Senate Resolution Number 148, a Senate resolution relating to conduct of Senate business during the interim between sessions. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, I move that Senate Resolution Number 148 be adopted. Members, this is the uh, Senate resolution that we do that allows the Senate to continue doing business uh, during the interim. To the motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm sorry, that's a roll call vote, members. That's a roll call vote because we are spending money. So, seeing no further discussion, the Secretary Terry will take the roll on the resolution.
call Senator Jasinski to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Benson votes aye. Benson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Chamberlain votes aye. Chamberlain votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Dames votes aye. Dames votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Ingebrigtsen votes aye. All members. I do need to hear these votes. I know it's going to be a real close one, but I do need to hear the, <laughs> the person reporting the votes. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senjum votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Howell votes aye. Howell votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Goggin votes aye. Goggin votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Thomasoni votes aye. Thomasoni votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Pratt votes aye. Pratt votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Johnson votes aye. Johnson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Call Senator Port to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Port. Thank you, Mr. President. I report an, report an aye for Senator Carlson. Carlson votes aye. Senator Port. An aye for Senator Dietzik. Dietzik votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Eakin. Eakin votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Kent. Kent votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Newton. Newton votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Wicklin. Wicklin votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Lopez Franzen. Lopez Franzen votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Torres Ray. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Pappas. Pappas votes aye. All members having voted, the secretary will close the roll. There being 67 ayes and no nays, Senate Resolution 148 is adopted. Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate file number 3633 be withdrawn from the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources Policy and Legacy Finance, given a second reading and placed on general orders. To that motion, Senator Port. I'm sorry, McEwen. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and, and Mr. President, I also um, uh, would like to impose a call of the Senate uh, for the remainder of the motion. The Senate is under call. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and the sergeants be instructed to bring in absent mem members. On that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. The secretary will close the roll. <laughs> members, as a reminder, this requires a 41 vote. Um, and also uh, that the, as I have been uh, following in previous motions that the author has a certain level of latitude. However, any other additional comment needs to be uh, rather tightly construed to the urgency to be declared to bring this to the floor. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, I, I ask today that this uh, bill be considered, Senate File 3633, is extremely urgent. What it is is, is a, a relatively modest ask. It's for an allocation from the general fund of $650,000 for a water study. What it does is it would allocate that money to the University of Minnesota Water Council, a nonpartisan group um, that um, has a variety of um, scientific disciplines represented um, to, to conduct that study. And what that group would be charged with is putting together an evaluation and then recommendations for policy to ensure that Minnesota has an abundance of clean water for the next 50 years. This is a different kind of study than anything that is happening right now. Um, it would not be a study, again, conducted by a state agency. It would be nonpartisan, and it is looking ahead into the long term. But colleagues, the urgency of this comes from the moment that we are in. We've had many discussions about this in regard to the climate crisis in particular. We are now in active climate crisis, which is just going to increase in intensity in coming years. 
Colleagues, now is the time for us to have the professionals, the experts in our state assess the state of our water supply. We all know that water is the source of everything. And we are the state of water. We are the state of 10,000 lakes, and we all know that there's many, many more than 10,000 lakes. This is our heritage. This is our pride. This is something that we need to make sure is preserved and protected going forward. This cannot wait. This type of study, this type of plan making cannot wait until the next session. It needs to happen now. There are many, many threats, as we know, to our clean water. The climate crisis, as I said, is on full steam ahead, and we don't really see that we have the political will at this point yet, at any rate, to take the kind of meaningful action that we will be needing to take in future years. So at the very least, at the very least, colleagues, let's make a plan going forward. There are also other threats, PFAS, microplastics, just to name a few, and we've already seen, we saw in our environmental omnibus bill from this body included a smaller study for the White Bear Lake area of our state to make a plan for that region. Well, colleagues, this is going to be happening more and more as we go forward. Are we going to piecemeal this, piecemeal this and do studies region by region as we hit crisis points? Or should we make a plan as a state based on expertise, based on science, to guide us as we go forward into this new territory that we're facing? I suggest that we need this information. And this truly is a modest ask. It's just for the information. We're also facing threats from corporate actors. Many of you know and you've seen the headlines, we've seen record amounts spent on lobbying of this body, of the House, in this building, record amounts of money, sometimes spent by corporate actors that are involved in fraud, bribery, child labor practices, union busting. They have projects that they want to push forward, and they think that if they spend that money in this body that they will see results for those projects. And in some cases, we have seen that they are well-founded to think that that is correct. So as we move forward into the future, we need a plan. We need to have some guidance from experts about what is going to be the best course of action in community together to look out for our water. It truly is. Everything is based on this. Our agricultural sector is based on this. Industry needs it. Our communities need it. We need clean drinking water, of course. There's so many issues that we need to address. The lead in our drinking water. So let's put together a plan. And let's realize the urgency of this moment that we are in. So colleagues, I ask for your support. And Mr. President, I request a roll call on this vote, please. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Further discussion to the motion to withdraw the, the bill? Senator J uh, Johnson Stewart. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> As a co author of this bill, I rise in support of Senator McEwen's motion. I think it's especially urgent today that we take this bill out of committee because the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, in fact, contains billions of discretionary funds available for studying specifically uh, clean water issues, contamination, and drinking water for communities throughout our nation. If we do the study now, we will be in a good position to secure those discretionary funds, and that could be that could result in literally millions of dollars coming to our state to promote just this um, critical need for clean water. I think uh, my colleagues in the Senate would be surprised to hear how many of our citizens, in fact, do not have clean drinking water or adequate sanitary sewage uh, treatment. So please vote green on this motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Limmer. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, would Senator McEwen uh, rise for she or yield will, for a question? She will yield, Senator Limmer. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Senator McEwen, I'm looking over this bill. Now, I'm not a member of the Environment Committee, uh, but I just have some basic questions. Um, do you think that maybe we should have a broader uh, organization looking into the possibilities of clean water rather than the isolated water council at the University of Minnesota? Senator McEwen. Um, I, I guess, uh, th well, thank you. Thank you, Senator, and thank you, Mr. President. Um, in, in answer to that question, I guess I'm a little confused about, uh, about the question, but I, I do, as I said, believe that the Water Council is the appropriate body for this study to take place. Um, we actually received from the university um, a uh, a statement um, stating that they were honored to be asked, um, they would be honored to be asked to conduct this study, um, listing um, the areas that they would focus in to um, go ahead and, and fulfill the requirements of what this allocation would be, listing the Water Council membership. Um, again, as I said, it's a, a diverse group of people. It's nonpartisan. Uh, I think there's a number of reasons why this group of experts is the appropriate place, the appropriate group to conduct this study and then to put together a policy plan to help guide us going forward. So, Senator Limmer, we're uh, straying into territory I've previously discussed. We're discussing the merits of the bill and not the urgency to be bringing the bill to the floor. If this does pass, we certainly can do that. Further discussion to the merits of bringing the bill? Senator uh, McEwen. Um, Thank you, Mr. President. Just in, in furtherance, um, very briefly, and to the urgency, because I, I appreciate very much this question about whether this is the appropriate place for this study to go. Um, and the, the Water Council membership, um, the members are Jeffrey Peterson of the Water Resources Center, Robert Sterner from the Large Lakes Observatory, Andy Erickson of St. Anthony Falls Laboratory, Patrick Nunnally landscape of Landscape Architecture, um, Rolf Weberg of the Natural Resources Research Institute, um, David Mulla, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing names here, of Soil, Water, and Climate, um, John Downing, the Minnesota Sea Grant Program, Aft and Clark Sather, um, Geography, Amber Cameron, Office of Public Engagement, Anthony Runkel, Minnesota Geological Survey, Bonnie Keeler, of the Humphrey School of Public Affairs, Catherine Bruins, Communication Studies, um, Crystal Eng, Earth and Environmental Science, Diana Carwin, Forest Resources, Nick Phillips of the Minnesota Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center, Melissa Kenny from the Institute on the Environment, and Dan Gilchrist, Office of the Vice President for Research. And again, I apologize if I mispronounced um, names. Thank you. To the urgency to withdraw from committee, Senator Le uh, Weaker. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator McEwen, for bringing this urgent matter. Senator McEwen referred to White Bear Lake, and in the northeast metro part of this region, we have looked at the need for special legislation to address the drought, the lack of water, and this has gone all the way to the state Supreme Court and rulings from the district court regarding various restrictions that need to be made. Uh, it is urgent. We still have not resolved this in conference committee in terms of the, of the need for a study in Northeast Metro. I hope it can be today. Uh, if not, uh, there will be a significant impact in Lake Elmo and several others, but it's not just in the Northeast Metro, it's throughout the state. So there's a sense of urgency, and as Senator McEwen pointed out, water is life. We depend on it, we're proud of water as our resource, we reflect it on our license plates, it's huge for tourism. We must put together a 50-year plan. Let's at least have a hearing. Thank you. Senator Westrom. 
Mr. President, uh, members, I would just uh, uh, apprise the body of other options that are out there. Um, the Senator from Duluth, uh, this would have been a discussion maybe appropriate for the LCCMR bill last week. Uh, that bill has been uh, uh, passed out of conference committee. We've come to agreement, but that's got $70 million of money towards studying water and other environmental aspects. That is what the Environmental Trust Fund is targeted for. So that would be a, would have been a great place to uh, look at this as opposed to the last day to try to pull it out and circumvent the committee process. Uh, but Senator McEwen, uh, there's also an RFP that is open yet a few more days into next week for the LCCMR, and this might be a perfect uh, project that they should be applying for those funds as those funds are targeted towards environmental uh, protection, enhancement, improvement, conservation of the air, water, and streams, uh, and uh, air, water, and land of Minnesota. So, uh, Senator McCune, I just wanted to raise that issue for the body. So, uh, the urgency uh, uh, isn't necessarily today. We could have discussed this on earlier bills this week or this month, as well as there's still a process open that they should be applying for if they haven't. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will take the roll on the motion to withdraw from committee and bring to general orders. Senator Port to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Port. Thank you, Mr. President. I report an aye for Senator Dietzik. Dietzik votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Eakin. Dietzik votes aye. Senator, second, the next one's. Aye for Senator Eakin. Eakin votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Kent. Kent votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Newton. Newton votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Wicklin. Wicklin votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Lopez Franzen. Lopez Franzen votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Torres Ray. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Port. Aye for Senator Pappas. Pappas votes aye. Senator and Port. Aye for Senator Carlson. Carlson votes aye. I call on Senator Jasinski to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes no. Anderson votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Sir Dames votes no. Dames votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Sir Goggin votes no. Goggin votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Sir Housley votes no. Housley votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Sir Howe votes no. Howe votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Sir Ingebrigtsen votes no. Ingebrigtsen votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Sir Benson votes no. Benson votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Senator Senjim votes no. Senjim votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator. Thomasoni votes no. Thomasoni votes nay.
Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Chamberlain votes no. Chamberlain votes nay. Senator Jasinski. Senator Nelson votes aye. Nelson votes aye. Mr. President, Senator, Jasinski, Senator Johnson votes no. Johnson votes nay. All members having voted, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 34 ayes and 33 nays, the motion to withdraw and place on general orders does not prevail. Reverting, uh, remaining under motions and resolutions, we revert to the third order of business, messages from the House. The Secretary will read the message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce that the House has acceded to the request of the Senate for an appointment of a conference committee consisting of three members of the House on the amendments adopted by the House of the following Senate file, Senate file number 4476, a bill for an act relating to redistricting. There has been appointed a such committee on the part of the House, Murphy, Cleavorn, and Torkelson. Senate file number 4476 is herewith returned to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. No, uh, no action is required. Uh, moving, remaining under motions and resolutions, we move to the 13th order of business announcements before we go to recess. The president does have an announcement. Uh, I do have the list of individuals who have chosen not to be here next year. It is a lengthy list. Uh, the president has organized them in ascending order from least, le least legislative service days to most legislative service days. Um, there is no technical rule or guideline on how many minutes an individual can use. A general good term would be maybe two minutes per year, per, uh, per year of service. Uh, that does mean that Senator Weger would then entertain us with uh, 52 minutes worth of discussion. <laughs> I think that may not happen, but I think it is, uh, I think the point to be made here is that uh, we will have 23 of these uh, also, staff members are probably, on, for those of you who have not been here before for this, staff members usually are here to listen to speeches. Staff members are certainly invited, invited to be on the floor. I don't know if they want to be here for 23 of them. Uh, we are opening the rear gallery specifically for staff members to come in and listen, as well as staff members can come and go as, as they particularly please. Um, because uh, I don't think we're going to make them stand for, I don't know, six hours for listening to this. Um, but uh, that's the announcement I have from the president. I have the list. We're ready to go. The only m possible exception to this could be Senator Tomasoni, who may be here today. If Senator Tomasoni is here today, we will take up his uh, commentary uh, today rather than tomorrow. But that's dependent upon his availability. Any further announcements before we recess? Seeing none. Senator Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, I'm going to recess to the call of the president. A uh, couple things going on today. Uh, number one, of course, we're continuing uh, discussions, trying to come towards an agreement. There are f probably, I think there are four bills that are four conference committee reports that are outstanding. Um, number one is E12. In my view, there's no reason why uh, we can't get to an agreement on education. Uh, Senator Chamberlain has put forward an offer that uh, puts the vast majority of that budget, of those money, those dollars available to the special education cross subsidy, something that we heard a lot about, not only in this chamber uh, from members, but that we're hearing a lot about from school districts. Uh, his last offer also included some uh, mental health funding for our schools, as well as the literacy piece to uh, help make sure that 
our teachers have the tools they need to teach the kids the skills they need to be successful in the classroom. So when it comes to E12, I think there's a very, very solid offer on the table that uh, would get strong bipartisan support in both chambers. Uh, when it comes to public safety, uh, there's still a little bit of a divide there. Uh, we will continue to uh, put forward proposals that uh, strongly support law enforcement to ensure that our public remains safe. Uh, when crime is at an all-time high, violent crime is at an all-time high, and at a time when we're hearing from people across the state of Minnesota that no longer feel safe in the communities that they live, work, and raise a family, uh, we feel like public safety should be a top priority. Uh, we are going to continue to work on that and try to find common ground. When it comes to transportation, I think uh, uh, Chair Newman and Chair Hornstein are right there. I think um, they're within reach of uh, making an agreement that, again, would have strong bipartisan support in both chambers. And then the other uh, big piece that's hanging out there is uh, Health and Human Services. Uh, Chair Abler and others have been working very, very hard. A top priority for Senate Republicans is making sure that our nursing homes assisted living facilities and disability service providers have the resources they need to prevent potential permanent closures. So those are the four bills that are out there. That HHS bill also includes some child care grants. So I think we're hitting priorities uh, that both Democrats and Republicans have. I'm confident that that conference committee report could also get strong bipartisan support based on the last offer that uh, Chair Abler has put forward. So we're making progress. The challenge is time is short. Today's the last day. We have till midnight to pass these bills. Um, so chairs and conference committee members are working. We're trying to get there. We're trying to reach agreement. There are very good offers on the table that, again, could get strong bipartisan support. And then finally, the tax bill is that other uh, piece that's out there um, that's been agreed to and again we should take that up as quickly as possible and uh, my guess is that will get strong bipartisan support in uh, both chambers. That's where we're at as far as the, the negotiations go. Uh, we are expecting a special guest uh, today. Uh, Senator Tomasoni is in route uh, to be here. Uh, we're expecting him to be here probably in the next 30 to 60 minutes or so. Uh, we will accommodate him the best we can. So I'm going to make a motion to recess to the call of the president, uh, but just be ready to come back uh, when it is most accommodating for uh, Senator Tomasoni. Again, my guess is in the next 30 to 60 minutes based on the latest information that I've received. Senator Isaacson. Would uh, the Majority Leader Miller yield for a question? Yes, he will, Senator Isaacson. So, uh, Senator Miller, and I'm, I'm really asking this because I'm trying to understand. Uh, my understanding is that the time it takes for conference committee reports to get filed and be ready to go so we can vote on the floor with the language, that period is passed. And while I definitely share your optimism and want to see us solve these problems because I think that they're important and there's some really good bills out there and good offers and I'm excited about taking care of the cross-subsidy. I love the mental health stuff we've been working on. I think there's been some really great bipartisan support. I don't understand, and help me understand how it works at the revisor's office. Is there enough time then if agreements are made in the next six hours to get those bills created in a way that we can have, be ready to vote on the floor? Senator Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, I have not spoke to the revisor's office directly, but what I'm hearing from chairs is there is still a possibility if we can get agreement within the next hour or two uh, there's still a possibility to get most, if not all, of these bills uh, done. But again, that's why we've put forward very, very strong offers. Um, in my opinion, a lot of this could have been agreed to two or three days ago. But if members of both chambers, both parties, want to get this done, the time to get serious is right now. Senator Frentz. Thank you, Mr. President. Minority will caucus immediately upon recess. Senator Miller. We, Senator Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate Republicans will caucus in room 1200 immediately following recess. Senator Miller renews his motion to recess the call of the President. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? The motion does. 
Motion does prevail. The Senate is in recess.